There were eight theaters within three blocks of where we sit. Three on College Street, two on Temple Street, two on, on Church Street. The Lowe's Poli was a palace. I mean, a palace. You look at some of the, the, the large um, theater houses around the sumptuous, but the Lowe's Poli was it. You know, it was the king. But the Bijou had regular... Um, when I was a student here, I saw Chet Baker and, and Jerry Mulligan uh, alternating with movies there at the Bijou on, on, uh, on, on uh, Temple Street. You know, all day long you go through, you're in there. Four or five shows a day. You know? But with television, within three years, all of them were gone. Nightclubs closed. Students no longer playing uh, you know, jazz. On, it started to f- disappear. Rock music. Ellington couldn't get a, a one television special out of his entire career. Mm-hmm. Replaced by the Beatles, or and particularly these imports from you know from the other there, the rise of Elvis. Television, the preoccupation, the intensity of that television intrusion, that electric intrusion. The the, the cultural ramifications of that were enormous, and you would have to be have been there, I think. To, to see it arrive and to see its, the effect of it in order to really grasp that. See? What changed um, all that vibrant club scene, all of that vibrant activity on campus of students playing was TV. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just that people were watching TV rather than practicing. It was rather the other way around. People were watching TV rather than consuming, you see. And it, it was so it was so fabulously vivid here, that I remember on the if you were working on Wednesday night in a in a club anywhere, the sets that used to start say at eight o'clock would have to start not until nine until Dragnet was off, uh-huh. right? Because nobody is going to miss Dragnet, and no, there were all these shows that were sort of built into the thing, and after a while, you started to see theaters closed. It, it's almost impossible to get that that idea across to undergraduates who who can't imagine that. How could that happen? You know, it's it's the way of young people it, all, anywhere to to assume that what they see is what there always was. It, it's so strange to them that these names that I would recite, like Billy Holiday or Sarah Vaughan and and uh, Earl Garner and, and all these all these people, Miles Davis. Would be playing in on on Dixwell Avenue or down out on out on Grand Avenue, you know. And at the same time, some of the joints are running floor shows and Dixieland, you know, hoots. Every every college at at Yale had a Saturday night dance, including the law school. Mm-hmm. All the fraternity houses had the parties. Some of the guys with quads, uh, undergraduates with four rooms together like this, would go to New York and bring Art Tatum up for a weekend. Uh, uh, Fats Waller was it was a common occurrence. This was the social life. It was a men's school. These guys would import the women in from from uh, Smith and Vassar and Radcliffe, and all of that. Put them up at the Taft Hotel, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this time would be wall to wall parties from Friday afternoon until Monday. Mm-hmm. It was a hell of a place to go to school. I earned more money playing music than than Yale instructors made. I was working every night. Dixieland job paid 50 bucks. You still do, by the way.